Sometimes, you will be faced with costs that contain both fixed and variable elements. These are known as semi-variable costs. But how do you work out the separate fixed and variable elements of a semi-variable cost? This video shows you how. So generally, costs are known as either fixed or variable. Fixed costs don't alter according to output and include expenses such as rent or line rental. Whereas variable costs alter directly according to output such as materials or direct labour. However, some costs are referred to as semi-variable and contain both fixed and variable elements. So let's take a look at how to calculate these separate elements. We look to do this in three steps. The first step is to calculate the variable cost per unit. We do this by first of all looking at the table of data which can be found on the right of your screen. Looking to find the highest and lowest costs and the associated units, which in this case is £117,400 and £108,300 for costs. They are the highest and lowest amount. And then we've got 11,200 and 9,900 units, which again are the highest and lowest units. All of these are highlighted in red on your screen. Once you have these figures, you then need to calculate the difference between the highest and the lowest costs and the highest and the lowest units. Which in this case provides us with £9,100 for costs and 1,300 units. The final part of step 1 is to divide the difference in costs by the difference in units which we have calculated above. These were 9,100 divided by 1,300 units. This should give you an answer of £7. This is your variable cost per unit and that is step 1 complete. Please pause the screen now and review step 1 to ensure you understand it fully before moving on to step 2. Step 2 requires you to calculate the fixed cost per unit. This is done by first of all calculating the total variable cost for any output given on the table of data. For this scenario, we're going to use 11,200 units. By using the variable cost per unit of £7, which we calculated in the previous step, we can now calculate the full total variable cost for 11,200 units by multiplying the two together. In this scenario, it gives us £78,400. Now what this means is the difference between your total cost for 11,200 units and your total variable cost is the fixed element. Now this is a crucial element of the high-low method. Whatever the difference is between the total cost for 11,200 units and the total variable cost you have just calculated is the fixed amount. And we know that the total cost for 11,200 units is £117,400 as shown in the table on the right. Therefore, £117,400 minus the £78,400 leaves you with £39,000. This is your fixed element. Please pause the screen now and review step 2 to ensure you fully understand it before moving on to the final step. The third and final step is to answer the actual question which in this scenario is to calculate the costs expected in June if output is expected to be 12,100 units. As you can see, there is now an additional row in the table on the right of your screen, showing 12,100 units in June, and all we have to do is to put the cost of those units using the high-low method. So we know that each unit costs £7 to produce for the variable element. Therefore, we now need to calculate the total variable cost for 12,100 units in June. The way to do this is to take your 12,100 units in June and times them by the £7 variable element giving us a total variable cost of £84,700. Next we need to add the fixed cost which were calculated in step 2 which was 39000 The final part of this is to simply add the two together so we're going to add our £39,000 fixed cost to our £84,700 variable giving us a total cost of 123,700. Therefore, the total cost in June, if output is 12,100 units, is 123,700 pounds. 
What this has allowed me to do is answer the actual question and as you can see on the table on the right hand side I've now put the answer of 123,700 in June. And there you have it, the high-low method. I hope that's helped. If you've got any questions at all, please comment below or follow us on Facebook at 2 Teachers Business and we'll look to discuss it further there. 